Shalom, brothers and sisters. Today's Thursday's thought is going to be on fasting, or tanit, as it's said in Hebrew. Let's start with the Torah in the Old Testament and talk about Yom Kippur. As most people are pretty well aware, most holy days in the Torah are festivals, they're feasts. But Yom Kippur is the Day of Atonement. It's the day that we're supposed to go without. It's the day that we fast from sundown to sunset, sundown or sunset to sunset or sundown to sundown, however you want to say that. It's approximate 24 hour time period where we don't eat or drink if we're healthy enough to do so. If we, if one is, you know, pregnant women, children, or people who are sick, afflicted, have some, something else going on, maybe they'll refrain from something, not do a full fast and that's fine. But typically, this is the day that the Lord has asked us to sacrifice. And that's, let's start there. That's what fasting is. It's a sacrifice. We are giving something up for God. So why do we do it? Well, that's a big part of it. When we give things up for the Lord in sacrifice, we're giving of ourselves. When we give of ourselves, that draws us closer to the Lord. Remember what King Benjamin said in the Book of Mormon, in, in the Book of Mosiah. When you're serving your fellow man, you're only serving the Lord. That can be sacrificing time, talent, food, money, whatever it is that we're giving up. So in order to do a fast, there's certain portions of it. And number one is we have to forego something. Now, the most common definition in the Latter-day Saint movement is this idea of giving up food or drink. But I want to remind you that there are other fasts and other, other ways to fast. So, for example, if one can't give up food and water for whatever reason, maybe they can give up a certain type of food. Maybe they're going to fast from meat, for example. Maybe they're going to go on a fast where they only eat bread and drink water for 24 hours. Or maybe they're just going to skip one meal. This is something that, that each of us individually need to pray to the Lord to figure out how we're going to do it. But even food isn't the only way to fast. Look at Lent. Is there something else you would like to give up? And at what time period are you going to give it up? Are, are you going to say, well, for, for this many weeks or months, I'm going to stop doing this or that? And is it really a sacrifice? Now, for me personally, if I were to say, you know what, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna forgo jogging. I'm gonna, I'm gonna fast for jogging for for a, a month, maybe a year, maybe a year. Is that really a fast for me? No, because I don't jog. I don't I don't enjoy it. It's just not something that's my cup of tea. So it wouldn't be a sacrifice. So it wouldn't really be a fast. And since I don't jog anyway, I'm not even giving anything up. Meanwhile, if it's something that I love, like chocolate, then suddenly, yes, that's a fast. And fasting also means that it's a temporary time period, something you're going to come back to. So if you are going to give up, say, chocolate, then that doesn't mean you're giving it up forever. At some point, you're going to go back to it. And there's a couple reasons for this. And in order to actually receive the blessings of fasting you have to actually put in the sacrifice part. Because what we're doing is, you know, in Yom Kippur, it's that Day of Atonement. I'm going to probably go back to that quite a bit in my thoughts here. But in Yom Kippur, we're sacrificing to, as Christians to remember the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Yes, it's the wrong time of the year. It's in the fall, not in, in the spring. But rather than having the Passover feast and remembering the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, now, six months later, we're fasting to remember his suffering. And that's something we can do in every fast, not merely Yom Kippur. So, when we give something up, the first part is there's got to be a little bit of pain. And with that pain is going to come the blessing of enjoying it again later. Remember in 2 Nephi, it's chapter 1, second half of chapter 1 in the RAV, chapter 2 in 2 Nephi of the OPV, where 
Nephi is talking to Joseph and he says to his son, there's got to be opposition in all things. You have to have the bitter to taste the sweet. So when we fast, when we come back from our fast, how much sweeter is that thing? The food that we were not partaking of? The chocolate? If you give that up, you know, if you give up a, a particular hobby that you enjoy, when you come back to it, it's like it all floods back into you. Like, oh, I remember how much I love this. It's not a routine anymore. And so that's kind of the worldly side of fasting, if you will. You've sacrificed something, and so now you can appreciate it more. But that is also very spiritual. Because we're not just robots going through motions. And we're not just gluttonous beings absorbing everything our egoism desires. We're taking a break from something, whether it be food or something else, to develop a closer relationship with the Lord or with the Lord, but then when we come back to it, we also can appreciate the relationship we have with what we were fasting from a little bit more also. And I think that truly is a blessing. With that sacrifice comes the call for service. And so because of that, whatever it is that you're not eating, this is a beautiful opportunity to give that to someone else, whether that be the money that you would spend or the food itself. Although I recommend using canned goods because if you're giving to a food bank, you can't just bring, you know, here's a pound of hamburger. They prefer canned goods that can be easily stored, moved, and distributed. But that said, I remember when I was younger, I was in a uh, singles war with the, with the Salt Lake City Church. And the bishop there got up to say, hey, listen, I know you guys are all college kids, but when you fast and you go to pay your fast offering, you can't just say, well, I decided to not eat ramen for this, this time, so here's 50 cents, we're good. It's got to be a sacrifice. So... You can't just go out and buy a box of ramen and drop it off and say, hey, that's what I was going to eat that day. In fact, if you can give a little bit more than what you were going to eat, again, it's about that sacrifice. Because when you hurt a little to give, that's Christ-like. Christ hurt a lot to give. So hurting our wallets just a little bit more is nothing in compared to is nothing in comparison to what he went through suffering in Gethsemane and on the cross. And when we do it again, like King Benjamin said in the book of Messiah, we're only serving God. So this is a sacrifice to the Lord that benefits and blesses others. It really is God giving these people food or the money for food. If you take that money, you know, maybe you're going to you know, $50 on food and you give it to a homeless person, I don't care what they're going to do with it. I don't want to discuss that. You are allowing them the opportunity to eat. And because it's cash, they can spend that however they want because they can't because homeless people can't carry food. They can go to a food bank or they can go to a soup kitchen or something like that and get a meal. I guess you can't go to a food bank to get a meal, but you can go to some place to get a meal. But the homeless can't really carry around cans of food. They don't have a way of storing or refrigerating. They're not going to be able to open up that can of food and, and cook it on a stove. So we need to make sure that whatever it is we're doing, we're doing at a level that the people can accept. When Jesus died for our sins, he did so on a level that we can accept. Everyone can accept the, Jesus, the grace of Jesus Christ. Everyone. It's just a simple matter of saying, I accept the grace of Jesus Christ. And, and that, that prayer in your heart, the broken heart and the contrite spirit. It isn't like trying to lug around a giant refrigerator full of food. So when we sacrifice what we were blessed with to give to someone else, please make sure that like the atonement, it's given in a way that is usable. 
So that said, I'm going to spin the wheel here a second. Um, recently, I read something by a rabbi who was saying, don't bother fasting at all. It's a waste of time. Fasting just makes you feel spiritual when in reality, it does nothing for you. And I thought about that. I was really taken aback. I'm like, well, what about Yom Kippur? Aren't you fasting on Yom Kippur? And then I was immediately reminded of the words of Jesus, where he says, when you fast, do it humbly, do it in secret. Don't go out in, you know, with ashes and sackcloth telling everybody, oh, look at me suffering. Look at me, I'm fasting. Oh, look at me. Because then you're not building a relationship with God. You're just bragging to your neighbors. And so this kind of takes us full circle here, but this takes us back to the real point of it. You're going to feel the opposition of all things, the opposition in all things. You're going to help others. You're going to sacrifice both by giving up and by giving. But back to the first part again, you're building that relationship between you and God. That is the most important part of the fast. And you can't do it without the others. So how do you fast? That's really between you and the Lord. You can go 24 hours without food and water. You can go 24 hours without food. You can go 24 hours without certain food or certain drinks or only eating a certain food or drink. You can go a certain amount of time, maybe a week or a month or whatever, giving up a particular thing that you enjoy. My recommendation for you, though, is to pray to the Lord and ask the Lord, what is it that you want me to give up and for how long? Because if you're going to be building a relationship with God, you shouldn't be the one setting the terms. I shouldn't be the one setting up the terms. Let the Lord set the terms. Now, there are specific instances where the Lord has already set the terms. Those are in the scriptures. So if you feel moved by the Holy Spirit to partake in those, again, go to the Lord, ask the Lord, how do you want me to do this? And then do what the Lord tells you. The blueprint is there, but I always recommend that you go to the master builder, the God that gave us the law, to ask him how to build that personal temple for you. Make that worship personal because fasting is worship. Now, the last thing I will mention is I know in some traditions there's an idea that when you fast, you should be asking for something. And I can't say that that's wrong because Jesus says in the New Testament that there are times when in order to heal the sick or get rid of a demon or what have you, um, perform an exorcism, that these things can only happen through fasting and prayer. In these situations, you are asking, I'm, I'm going to make a sacrifice and I would like for a particular outcome. So how do you do that? Well, I've talked before about how to pray. It's the same way with how to fast. You have to have your relationship with the Lord to a point to where you know what to ask for because the Lord's told you what he wants to give you, what he wants to happen. Now, if you're going to be blessing someone, whether it's healing the sick or for some other purpose, you always want to listen to the Lord before you give a blessing. And the Lord will tell you if he wants you to fast and how to do it. Now, in that instance, I do recommend you let someone know, the person that you're going to be blessing know, and oh, I need to prepare for this. You don't necessarily have to tell them exactly how you're preparing for it unless the Lord tells you to, listen to the Spirit. Because again, this isn't about bragging about what you're doing. But make sure you're following the guidance of the Holy Spirit as you move forward in faith so that you will be able to perform the ordinance that the Lord has asked you to do and this person has asked you to do in the way that the Lord wants you to do it. That said, please don't think that fasting is, again, like prayer, 
access to a genie where you can just fast and and get whatever it is that you personally want. We fast for the things that the Lord wants us to have, the things that we truly need. The Lord will hear us when we ask for the things that we want. But to be truly blessed, we have to go to the Lord with a clean cup. Because if we pour it, put a dirty cup in that fresh water and drink it, it's, it's going to be bitter because we're not going to get what we want. But if we put the clean cup in, then we will taste the goodness of God. And whether we're praying or we're fasting or whatever it is that we're doing, we'll be doing the Lord's will for us. And we'll be able to see the blessings of God in our lives. So that's my thought for you this Thursday. And I leave it with you. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.